So there appears to be a new move against RFK Jr. Now, if you guys don't know RFK Jr., um, he is part of the Kennedy family. Uh, he's a complete crank and a lunatic, and he really got a lot of backlash because recently he stated that, uh, I think he proffered that, you know, potentially the COVID-19 was uh COVID-19 was some kind of like bioweapon used to target like specific you know race groups and stuff like that so he's a complete lunatic a complete crank now he's actually been polling pretty darn well in the primary he's been polling he was in the 20s but it appears that he's fallen out of the 20s and he's now going down to you know um around you know more towards the R. Kelly territory you know the 14s 15s those kinds of areas um but what the Democrats' strategy, the political strategy had been for a while was let's ignore, let's ignore. And I think that's a good strategy with the crazy person like RFK Jr., even with someone like Marianne Williamson, who's also crazy, but nowhere close to RFK Jr. level crazy. But um, now it appears they're ch that they're changing strategy. And so it says Democrats put RFK Jr. on blast and change of strategy. Democrats are no longer trying to ignore Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and have taken to calling him out in public after a week of controversies. National party leaders for the first time acknowledged Kennedy's disruptive presidential bid with sharp criticism, and lawmakers met his claims of censorship head-on during his testimony on Capitol Hill. It's a notable change from their previous approach in which Democratic leaders and party officials hoped Kennedy would simply fade away on his own. It also serves a purpose for President Biden who has so far been cautious about addressing his primary rival directly. On his own, he was doing a really good job of showing everyone his initials stood for real fucking crazy. So it made sense to let him be, said Eddie Vale, a strategist who worked on numerous Democratic campaigns. This week was different and made sense for folks to engage because of the combination of outright anti-Semitism and being a witness for Republicans' nonsense hearing, Phil said. Kennedy this week drew backlash for asserting without evidence that COVID-19 was, quote, ethnically targeted, a claim infectious disease and ethics experts refused. Kennedy was caught on video by reporters saying Chinese people and Ashkenazi Jews were not targeted as much as other races, including black and white people. So just a complete, massive lunatic. I've never even believed that he's a legit legitimate candidate, said Arthur Kaplan, a biomedical expert who's spoken out about the various public relations storms that have dominated Kennedy's campaign. Um, and so it talks about how uh, White House Press Secretary Karine, uh, Jean uh, Pierre came out and actually, you know, responded. And so you actually have Democrats actually coming out and, you know, fighting about this. And so I guess Hakeem Jeffries, horrible, horrible uh, <laughs> politician, by the way. But, you know, his whole campaign is being run by right wing political operatives who have one objective, try to take down President Biden, Jeffries argued this week. So there's a bunch, there's a couple of issues I want to get at here, but this is a really big one that I want to talk about. So this, there's this idea that inherently a, a primary challenge to an incumbent is negative. Now, it's been the tradition for, I don't know, maybe two some decades, roughly two and a half, maybe, uh, where a... Uh, incumbent president is not challenged by a member of his party because of the perception of being some kind of spoiler or damaging the candidate for the future. But from my understanding of like the political science research and the academia, there's no real evidence that that's true in terms of a primary challenge making it worse. My opinion is if you're actually adaptable and assuming the other person, uh, other person is like typically a rational actor or the other person doesn't even have to be a rational actor, but assuming they are, I would definitely say you would have an actual more tested candidate because if you have somebody who, you know, you're trying to win a presidency, you have to be able to, you know, appeal to the entire country, right? People around the country. And so you're going to have to be able to appeal to a bigger swath of people than if you're running in a congressional district. And so that will make you have to appeal to more people than you were already attempting to appeal to. So, you know, I think that it makes you better and it, it hardens you, right? Competition is good, right? Uh, hard work, this kind of thing, easy cruises to nominations. It makes you uh, sleepy. It makes you overconfident, cocky. It's kind of like what happened to the Chinese empire where it got overtaken by the, the whites, you know, in Europe and, and America and they fell asleep and it was like, oh shit, like what happened? Um, and then they became like a semi-colonial state, just stuff like that. I think it's not good. So I disagree with this idea that, oh, hey, um, a primary challenge is inherently bad. I completely, completely disagree. Um, now, this guy is a complete lunatic, uh, but it appears his numbers are going down a little bit. It was in the 20s before. I remember it being in the 20s prior to the summer, but now it appears to be going down to like the 15s, 14s, etc. And I think that the, the strategy, the right strategy, and I didn't even feel really right about making this video, but he is polling well. 
um, it is to ignore him. Now, I think that the COVID comments were just so unbelievably like horrible and insane and crazy that I think that they really had no choice but to actually come out and talk about it because it was just such an insane comment. So I understand them coming out in response to like the bioweapon comments is completely insane. Uh, but here's an article. It says Biden opens up widely in an RFK Jr. in New Hampshire poll. President Biden holds a strong lead over his long shot 2024 Democratic primary challengers, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and Marianne Williamson. Got to like his like got to like the, you know, uh, corporate media <laughs> framing his long shot candidates and make sure you know that they're long shot candidates. Um, and Marianne Williamson in New Hampshire, according to a poll released Tuesday. Another thing you also got to keep in mind is um, the one of the big reasons why the red wave was fake and didn't actually happen was actually because there was a big influx of shitty pollsters. And so a bunch of these were like premise tip insights. Like these are just random things that we've never really, we don't really know big village. Like what the hell is this? And 538 and places like that and uh, real clear politics, they use them. Uh, in their aggregation numbers. And so there was an epidemic of shitty pollsters. So I personally only take polls from someone well known. Like YouGov is always gonna have like this weird bias towards, I think Democrats in general, but also specifically corporate ones are like, I remember they had this weird Elizabeth Warren bias in 2020 for some reason. Like her numbers in every YouGov poll was like eight points above or something compared to every other one. Like Quinnipiac, Echelon, these are ones that we at least know. Um, and so I don't take these kinds of ones seriously anymore. I can't trust them anymore. I'll trust like a Harris, you know, ex Harris poll because I know about them. Um, Gallup, obviously. But it says that it, it found that Biden has 68% support among Democratic primary voters in the early voting state, well ahead of Kennedy who's polling at nine and Williamson at eight. And so uh, what's going to end up happening is there's going to be, you know, it's called front loading. Um, it's called front loading. Our, our presidential election system is a front loaded. So, you know, the first two states, New Hampshire and Iowa, stupidly have a crazy amount of impact considering they're incredibly uh, non diverse and incredibly tiny and they have a huge, huge impact on the race. So he's not a serious candidate, but this is inevitable with Joe Biden because the thing is, is Biden has a lot of people who don't want to vote for him. And so immediately you're going to have that default dislike towards you. Um, that's going to happen where it's like, hey, man, we want somebody else. But it's not enough for them to be like, man, like F Joe Biden, like popping the middle finger. It's hard to do that with Joe Biden for some reason. I don't know what it is, if it's hard to hate a skeleton or I just don't really know. It's kind of a weird thing where it's like for Republicans, it was super easy to hate Obama for uh, obviously because they're racist. And then you have like, you know, <clears throat> Trump is really, you know, easy to hate if you're sort of a liberal or whatever. And so it's this weird situation. But overall, I think the strategy is just ignore. He's not a serious guy. And the more attention he gets is what he wants. And you run the danger of the more attention you get, the more it's going to help you. That's what happened with Trump. Trump won because the media covered him. You can even see like graphs that show his, um, his poll numbers and the amount of media coverage he got. He got millions of dollars in free uh, media coverage. He didn't even have to run his own ads. And so I think that's the best strategy, let him talk. But at the same time, that comment he made was so insane. Uh, it was so completely bonkers that you have to talk about it. And I do think that uh, Biden should debate his primary challengers. I think it's undemocratic not to uh, have a debate. Uh, it's a disservice to the American people and, uh, you know, informed democracy, representative democracy. Uh, I think that that is a bad thing. And I also don't think that competition is a bad thing. Um, I would say I'm also pretty disappointed in Marianne Williamson's campaign. I thought she'd be doing more of a splash, but it seems like she's kind of only focused on TikTok, which, you know, is a good arm for your campaign. But if you are trying to make a big splash, you also have to appeal to mainstream media. But um, I can see why that that would like yield her probably the most voters that she can actually get. But interesting stuff going on.